Number 2014-0223, Parish President Remarks and Report, Mr. St. Pierre. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Walk for Fitness at the Eddie Dufresne Community Center. Members of the public are invited to utilize the Edward A. Dufresne Community Center's gym located at 274 Judge Edward A. Dufresne Parkway in Luling. The recreational walking Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 p.m., unless an event is scheduled at the gym, is free of charge. Participants can walk a mile on the track around the perimeter of the gym in 15 laps. Those utilizing the gym must sign in at the main lobby desk before entering and sign out uh, upon completion of their activities. For more information, contact the community center at 985-331-3795, extension 1. The Louisiana Job Connection website to launch, a, uh, launch on today. Louisiana Job Connection is a new free website developed by the Louisiana Economic Development designed to meet the talent recruitment needs for Louisiana employees. The site using a method to match employees' job posting with the most qualified candidate making finding the right employee more straightforward. Now is the time for Louisiana employers to register for Louisiana Job Connection and post their open jobs. This too makes it easy to make a great first impression with the customer's company landing page, manage the matching threshold so only the most qualified candidate comes to the registrar's inbox and recruits the best employees at no cost to the company and connect directly with the potential employees without having to leave their system. For help, visit LouisianaJobConnection.com. Louisiana uh, Veterans Affairs Secretary invites vets to share health care experiences at a town hall meeting. The Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs announced on August scheduled a town hall meeting to be held across the state. The purpose of these meetings is to allow Louisiana veterans to share experiences they had had with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs health care system, including VA clinics, hospital, and mental health care services. Secretary David LaCourt met previously with veterans in Bossier City, Monroe, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lake Charles, Lafayette, Homer, Leeville, Alexander, Colfax, and Shreveport. The Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs will compile the information veterans share at the town hall meeting and will share findings with local, state, and federal elected employees, officials, as well as key staff at the VA in hopes of influence positive change and increased transparency. St. Charles Parish will host a meeting at 6 p.m. on August the 20th at the Edward A. Dufresne Community Center. Contact Gary, Senator Gary Smith for more information at 985-764-9122. St. Charles Parish on Friday received a permit to complete construction of the Magnolia Ridge reach of the needed West Bank Hurricane Protection Levy. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Louisiana Department of Natural Resources gave the final approval of the permit which includes the second lift of an earthen levee, tile exchange structure, and a major pumping station for the interior drainage. With the permit, with the receipt of this permit, St. Charles Parish now has clearance to construct an entire 10-mile stretch of levee between the Davis Diversion and the Sunset Tie-In at the Parity Canal. Since we started this endeavor in 2008, I have always compared the West Bank levee to a puzzle, and I'm happy to say that this is the final ap ap approval piece. This is a major milestone, but we still have got years of construction ahead. $35 million has been set aside by the parish in the 2014 budget for planning levy work, with approximately $1.1 million already spent in 2014 on the construction of the Willow Ridge Reach, soil borings for the Ellington Reach, and the permit fees for Magnolia Ridge Reach. The funds are also being utilized for surveying, land acquisition, testing, and inspections. Any funds not used in 2014 will be rolled over in 2015. Geotechnical testing is also being completed on the Sunset Reach using funding through the Lafourche Levy District. I want to thank the St. Charles Parish Levy Team, especially Ms. Sam Scholey, who without his leadership, his guidance, his working with the Corps of Engineers, this would have never been possible. Members of the St. Charles Parish Council for approving these projects and our project consultant, BKI and GCR. The St. Charles Parish West Bank protection includes approximately 18.3 miles stretched to be completed directly to the south of Luling, Bouti, Parity, Bayou Gosh, and the Zalman. The parish continues to seek uh, funding assistance from the federal and state partners to expedite construction. 
The, le the levy project remains a top priority for St. Charles Parish Council and the parish president, and both will continue to work towards moving it forward. For more information on the St. Charles Parish West Bank Hurricane Protection Levy, residents can find an update page with photos and videos on www.stcharleswestbanklevy.com. The first annual uh, youth rally was held for the first time with hundreds of students from across St. Charles Parish gathering at a youth rally to hear about the importance of education and the negative effect of bullying and the dangers of social media. The Parish Department of Community Service, St. Charles Parish Sheriff's Office, and the Alpha Daughter of Zion High joined together for this event, which was held on August the 9th at the Eddie A. Dufresne Community Center. Along with the important lessons taught, the children and teens got opportunities to win iPads, football signed by National Football League players, and other door prizes. A rap gospel group, gospel group performed, and food was provided to the attendees. The theme of this event was aspire, acquire, and achieve. The goal of the, pro of the program is to show students how to use good judgment, teach them, teach them how to walk away from bad situations, and show them the importance of how living beyond a peer group. It was a great event, and we're already looking forward to next year's rally. That concludes my report, Madam Chairman. Number 20140223, Parish President Remarks and Report. Mr. St. Pierre is not here. We're going to hear from Mr. Bobby Donaldson and Mr. Bowe. Not a report as such, but in the absence of the parish president, he asked me to pre present an award, which is certainly an honor and a pleasure. Buddy Bowe, Chief Administrative Officer for St. Charles Parish, was named the 2014 Millennial Changemaker of Greater New Orleans by Social Renaissance. The Millennials honor young professionals in the Greater New Orleans area with which, who contribute to the community through public service, making significant strides in business sectors and serve as cultural ambassadors. Bo was selected as a finalist in the change maker category and was announced the winner at the award ceremony at the Civic Theater in New Orleans. In addition to his work on flood insurance reform, Bo was recognized for his involvement in the River Region Young Entrepreneurs Academy for the past two years, assisting students ages 12 through 18 start their own business, volunteering for WRBH Reading Radio for the Blind, and serving on the board of the United St. John United Way. Buddy Bo, congratulations. That's my report. No comment. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bobby. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Bo. Um, we can hear from you as well. Or okay. Okay, on to business. Um, as most of the residents throughout St. Charles know and, and the greater New Orleans region, last night at around 9.30 there was an incident that occurred at the Diamond Green Diesel Facility, which is located on the Valero Refinery property. It's a partnership between Valero and Diamond Green Diesel. Um, by 11.17, well, what had occurred was a, uh, an, a, an explosion that caused a fire to start burning um, from one of the, the tank cars on the site. And by 11.17, the fire was almost out, and at 11.45, we were notified by Valero um, that the fire had indeed been burnt out. The EOC was activated shortly after us being notified of the event that, that had occurred on the facility. Um, and there was no parish-wide call that was made. Uh, that decision was made based on the fact that there were no protective measures to advise the public of, there were no injuries, and based on the advice of Valero and the officials on the scene, uh, there was no real risk of the situation escalating. And so once we knew that the fire had been contained, um, we, we felt it was best being a Sunday evening by almost 10 o'clock by the time all of that had been confirmed that a call was not needed and the fumes being released from the explosion were non-toxic. Uh, and that's a result of the feedstock at that facility being used cooking oil usually. So it was basically just a big frying pan that was on fire. Um, on site were DEQ to do air monitoring, the Coast Guard, state police, and local fire and local police. Um, the sirens that were heard throughout most of the parish, but specifically on the East Bank, were internal uh, sirens that were fired uh, by Valero and Shell to alert their employees on site that an incident had occurred and that emergency response personnel needed to be activated and do what they normally do in response of an emergency. Those sirens were not sounded um, by 
the St. Charles Parish Emergency Operations, however we are. Um, we've met today with Valero and will continue to in the future and Shell and our other industrial partners to make sure that when those sirens are um, si um, released in the local communities that we're notified so that we can make sure that we're provided with the information necessary because the community <laughs> over the years has been um, is very knowledgeable of the fact when you hear an alarm, you tune in to Channel 6, you go to the parish website, you look on social media. And so it's very important for our public information office to have that information uh, so that we can properly give it to the public. Tomorrow, we're having a debriefing session with the emergency operation executive staff and the parish president. That's happening tomorrow morning. And then Thursday morning, we've scheduled a after action and learning session uh, with our entire emergency operations staff, our public information office, and our executive team to go over what occurred and how we can make sure that uh, in the future response is quicker, information is clear, and that we make sure that we protect the lives and property of the residents of St. Charles. Any questions? Any questions from the council? I'm sure the residents appreciate that explanation of the course of events. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you.